starts right now. Making news early this morning, a second man is now in police custody, arrested in connection for the death of San Antonio ISD police detective Cliff Martinez. The latest on the investigation and the multiple people arrested. And a fire killing six people in an apartment complex in Las Vegas. Others were forced to jump to save their lives. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. I think that is Central Catholic High School just across the street. 37 degrees out there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey to see what the rest of the day, what the week looks like. Yes. Whew, and it's an week. exciting week. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, December 22nd. Thank you so much Great for joining. starting your day with us. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it is an exciting week, but an exciting day because it is officially winter. Yes. And it, Sarah, it is finally starting to feel like it. Well, yeah. It's been feeling like it in the mornings especially, but yesterday was beautiful. We warmed up really nicely, left the windows open all day long at my house. My cat likes that, by the way. Aww. It's there. Nora? Looking outside, Nora. But yeah, it is a nice and chilly outside right now with temperatures in the 30s just about everywhere we look. It's 37 degrees in San Antonio. Visibility is at about nine miles, and we've got a wind from the north at about five miles per hour. So take a look up in the hill country. Anywhere you see that pink color, temperatures are at or below freezing. And so we do have a temperature of 28 degrees at Bernie Stage Airfield, right on the Kendall and Bernie County line. Now, I wouldn't. Uh, I would believe it rather if there was some fog out there this morning that turned into uh, frost on windshields and things like that. In fact, uh, visibility is, is lower near New Braunfels and down near Pleasanton, still okay out in the hill country. But don't be surprised if you wake up and see some frost on your windshield, especially if you live in the hill country or some frost on the blades of grass in your front, front lawn. Here's the forecast for the day today. Nothing but sunshine, 50s during the first part. 60s during the second part, and then we'll cool down into the 40s in the evening with a light and variable wind. It's going to warm up, though, substantially into Christmas. So I'll be back with a look at your Christmas forecast in just a few. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. We look forward to that. This morning, three people are in critical condition after a suspected impaired driver hit a deputy's vehicle. Now, it happened in North Bear County near Autumn Stage Road off of I-10. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with more details. Good morning. Well, we know that that portion of I-10 was closed off for several hours due to the investigation as well as the extent of damages. And that suspected driver at fault, we know that will be tested for suspicion of alcohol. Those details are still remaining pending this morning. Investigators say a deputy was helping a stalled vehicle on the eastbound lanes of I-10, and that's when the suspected drunk driver hit the deputy's unit, flipping it on to the stalled car that deputy was helping. We know three people were inside the car, a man, a woman and a teenager. The man had to be airlifted. We know that he's in critical condition and the other two victims were taken by ambulance. They're all in serious condition. All these three victims are recovering at University Hospital. We knew we do know that the deputy was not hurt. Meanwhile, that suspected drunk driver, she was taken in serious condition also to University Hospital. And depending on the results for that alcohol test, um, more charges could be pending. And we do know that that high Highway off of I-10 near Bernie Stage Road is now open. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Now to the latest on the investigation into the death of SAISD Detective Cliff Martinez. San Antonio police saying they have arrested a second man they believe played a role in killing Detective Martinez. This morning, police telling us they have arrested 29-year-old Alfredo Martinez. He was booked on a capital murder charge late last night following a police search. He was taken into custody by the SAPD Street Crimes Unit. A second man, 23-year-old Jorge Lopez, also arrested, now facing charges for capital murder. All of this after Detective Martinez was run over by a vehicle and killed early yesterday morning. The incident happening at an IHOP in the 700 block of Hot Wells Boulevard. Police have confirmed Detective Martinez had been working at his second job there as an overnight security guard. Investigators also questioning a 21-year-old man who is considered a person of interest. 
A man is behind bars and facing charges this morning after police say he robbed the Culebra meat market back in October. Now, according to an arrest affidavit, 28-year-old Matthew Martinez also attempted to rob a Dairy Queen on that same night. The victim from Dairy Queen says Martinez ordered food and then passed over a note which read to put the money in the bag or else they would be shot. That's when the victim got the attention of other people in the store and Martinez left. Now, shortly after, Martinez arrived at the Culebra meat market on the far west side. According to the arrest affidavit, Martinez walked up to the cashier and demanded money while hinting to that cashier that he was armed with a gun. Both of the victims' description of Martinez matched. His bond is set at $100,000. A father safely got his teen out of their northwest side house after a fire broke out. Now, it happened around 9 p.m. last night on Casabello, San Antonio Fire Department, telling us that the teen started the fire by either cooking or starting a heater. Now, the father was nearby and was able to get him out in time. No one was hurt but the team was taken to the hospital as a precaution. Fire officials telling us the house has significant damage to the backside. And in your morning headlines, tragic news out of Houston. Police say a woman was killed and another person injured after an attack by three dogs. Police say a man reported his wife had been attacked by dogs. She was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police say moments later, the owner of the dogs reported that they attacked another woman. She was found lying in a ditch. She was then found dead with bite marks all over her body. The dogs were contained by animal control. Now, they were called to take them away. Police say the owner may now be charged with negligent manslaughter. And Las Vegas authorities telling us that a fire in a three-story apartment building in downtown Las Vegas killed six people and hurt 13 yesterday. A fire department spokesman says some residents were forced to jump from upper floor windows to escape the heavy smoke. Firefighters arriving at the scene began treating the injured and using ladders to rescue numerous people hanging from windows. They say the fire started in the area of a first floor apartment. It was a stove and appears to be accidental. And two buses erupted in flames and a third damaged in the LAX parking lot at a Los Angeles International Airport. The fire broke out on one of the busiest travel days of the year. Luckily, no one was on board of any of the buses at the time. It took firefighters 20 minutes to put the flames out. But look at that smoke right now. No report injuries. As for how the blaze started, the cause still under investigation. Well, I'm just going to go out there and say it. Not a great showing for the Spurs last night, and it is a tough morning for fans. A true test of the team hosting familiar foe Kawhi Leonard, his new team, one of the best in the league, the Los Angeles Clippers. And, well, the crowd turned on Kawhi Leonard again, showering the Clippers forward with deafening boos and angry shouts each time Kawhi touched the ball. Now, he shrugged the boos off and then dominated the game. He was 11 for 16 from the field, Four steals, only two turnovers on the game. The Clippers taking over in the second half, and frankly, it was a pace that the Spurs were simply unable to match. Now, the Clippers had 74 points in the paint, 26 fast break points, 36 points off of 18 turnovers. Kawhi Leonard earning his first victory here in San Antonio since he left the franchise. He finished with 26 points, nine assists, seven rebounds. I will say, though, the lone bright spot for the Spurs offense. DeMar DeRozan, the only Spur to break 20 points. He finished with 24. 20 of those were in the first half. Spurs fall at home 134 to 109. We give up 76 points in the paint, and uh, they get about 34, 36 points off turnovers. Uh, you're not going to win that basketball game. That must be some kind of record for points off turnovers. So, uh, pretty sloppy and uh, not physical enough, you know, tonight. Silver and Black now sit at 11 and 17, and though it might look dim, they are only two games out of the final playoff spot. That number eight seed. Again, still a long season, still a lot of time to get back there. Spurs are back in action tomorrow. They're on the road at the Memphis Grizzlies. Tip-off from the FedEx Forum is at 7 o'clock tomorrow. <sighs> so I was looking at the score earlier mm -hmm. in the game, and, the, you know, it wasn't it was close. It was, yeah, exactly. It was close. I was like, yeah, you know. First half there, holding we'll, with them. We'll be okay. Yeah, and we'll catch up next half. And then it just, like, the score was just, I was like, no. I will say, Tim Duncan being the official mm -hmm. assistant coach mm -hmm. on the bench, it's always really interesting to see his in-game reaction uh, when yeah. he and Becky just have this, like, very candid response. Yes. When he's, like, slumped down in the chair or he's just giving side-eye. <laughs> 
and it's I fun. would mm. I would not want to get side eye from Tim Duncan. No, or no. Coach Pop. Oh yeah, neither uh, one. Well, either way. Yeah. Go Spurs go. Yeah, go Spurs go. <laughs> 609, 37 degrees out. All right, if you're on a quest to find the perfect pillow for a Christmas present, we have some things you need to know before you buy one. That's coming up. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 37 degrees to start your Sunday morning. It's an important week. Yeah, Christmas week and Christmas week. There you it's go. feeling like Christmas right now, but we're going to find out from Sarah. I think it may not officially feel like Christmas on Christmas Day, but it'll still be nice. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back 613 and it is officially winter. It, it is. is. It is officially winter as of 1019 last night. You were right. Flip switched. No, it's just switch the way flips. it is. Well, that's what you said yesterday. What did I, say? I think you said a, fl uh, a, a flip, flip switch. Oh, uh, <laughs> did you? I heard switch, switch flipped. flipped. I don't know. Either but I way, what, it's what I do yeah. know <laughs> is that it's chilly outside right now and we are going to warm up into Christmas Day. So enjoy these crisp and chilly mornings. It is 37 degrees outside right now. We've got a wind from the northwest at five miles per hour. Today that wind will be light and variable. We're not really going to have breezy conditions and taking a look at temperatures around San Antonio. There are several places that are below freezing right now, especially outside of the city center. It's 37 at the airport, 35 at JBSA Randolph, 33 at Port SA. You get up into the higher elevations and temperatures cool down just a smidge. It's below freezing in the 20s out at Bernie Stage Airfield, 24 in Comfort, 26 in Kerrville, even freezing down in Pleasanton right now. Now I want to caution you if you do live up in the hill country this morning, try to get out there and see if you have frost on the ground. I think you may because temperatures are awfully close to the dew point or when we're below freezing, the frost point. So if you do have a little bit of a glazing of frost on your vehicle, on uh, the grass in your front uh, lawn, that is entirely possible. We've also got some areas of fog. Now, Pleasanton is below freezing and visibility is at about half a mile right now. That might actually be freezing fog at the moment, which again is just really going to result in uh, uh, some light frost on the grass and on your vehicle perhaps. Elsewhere though, visibility is okay. And in the high rise future cast, we're gonna see nothing but sunshine uh, into the afternoon. And so temperatures will rebound nicely into the low to mid 60s, just about for all of us. And with clear skies this evening, we're gonna cool down quickly as well. Temperatures will fall once again into the 30s as we start the day tomorrow. It'll be hard for us to get a freeze in San Antonio, but again, I do think a freeze could be possible in the hill country tomorrow morning. Morning. Let's break it down for you uh, pretty much hour by hour here by 10 will be in the low 50s, so it'll still be chilly for the first part of the morning. Even around lunch, still nice and cool temperatures in the upper 50s into the afternoon. Very comfortable, a lot like yesterday, 65 and sunny with a light and variable wind. Now all of this gold color here, we're looking at the water vapor and satellite imagery right now. It is and all that gold color is just very dry air. You zoom out and you can see a spin in the atmosphere right here at the Texarkana area. That is the upper level low that's producing some good amount of heavy rain for the southeastern portion of the United States. Uh, and that's uh, we're on the dry side of that. Of course, that system, however, could impact uh, the airlines today. Now this early in the morning, happy to report no delays, but it is a big travel weekend, so that might change. And then here around uh, Texas, all of the local airports are in tip top shape at the moment. Let's give you a sneak peek of Christmas. We're going to warm up. Uh, we'll have a chilly morning with temperatures in the 40s on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And both on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you can expect a high in the low 70s. So again, pretty warm on Christmas Day. It won't even be that cold on Christmas morning. So uh, if you want to make it cold, I would suggest maybe having some iced coffee that morning yeah. or something like that <laughs> to make it feel a little bit more like Christmas. Turn or on the AC. No. <laughs> I, I don't want anybody's bill to go up. I'll tell no, you that. No. It'll still be nice. It'll, it'll be great. And it's 
typical San Antonio Christmas with temperatures in the 70s for us yeah, sometimes. It'd be great. We'll see a lot of people in shorts and Santa hats, possibly. We will. That's a funny combo. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. I got to say, I'm really intrigued by the freezing fog. Oh, yeah. It's really cool. We can talk more about it if you have more questions later. We have so many questions and so much more show to talk about. 617, 37 degrees out. And if a perfect pillow is on your Christmas list for somebody this year, we have some things you'll have to know before you buy. And it is just about do or die weekend for the Cowboys and for the Eagles. Just about a winner go home matchup. Last time they met, Cowboys won big. Rematch later today. We're going to have a preview. Now, a lot of people will be watching that game. Here are your pick three numbers 172, Fireball four, and then we have Daily four, two, three, five, nine, Fireball zero. Cash five is three, nine, 10, 23, 34. And Powerball 19, 31, 35, 50, 67, Powerball 14. Power play is two. Good luck. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Well, it is a great morning to be a Texans fan. Congrats, y'all are officially playoff bound. We had some Saturday NFL action. Houston Texans taking on the Bucks in Tampa Bay. Texans defense starting off strong. Bradley Roby racing back a 27-yard interception, picking off Jameis Winston's first pass of the game, the sixth pick six that the Bucks quarterback has thrown this season. And I gotta be honest, that was far from his only pick of the game. Jameis threw. Jameis threw four interceptions, the Texans caught four interceptions, and they also forced a fumble. Still though, even after all of that, it was close at the end of the game, but Fairburn snapped a fourth quarter tie, his third field goal in the game, helping the Texans keep on to that victory. 23-20, clinching the division, the fourth AFC South crown in five years. The now 10-5 Texans won despite a shaky performance from Deshaun Watson. He only completed 19 of 32 passes, only finishing with 184 yards and did throw an interception. But still, a win is a win. And next up, eight days off, Houston then hosting the Titans' last game of the regular season next Sunday. Meanwhile, the other Texas pro team still fighting to punch their ticket to the postseason. Although the Cowboys had an impressive win last week, taking on the Rams, the unofficial NFC East Championship game is today taking on Philadelphia and has a lot of immediate consequences. Dallas, who started the season 3-0, controls its own fate and controls their path to the playoffs. They could secure the division and a playoff berth with a win in Philadelphia today. And fun fact, last time the two teams faced off, Dallas won huge 37-10 in Jerry World. The Eagles, though, they need two more wins, basically need to win the rest of the season to claim that final spot. And they are going to need a win at the Giants next week if they beat Dallas today. Dallas wraps up 2019 against the Redskins, and assuming there are no ties, the NFC East will finish with only a total of 24 wins. Just put that in perspective, not a lot of wins. NFC East, very weak division. Gotcha. Also, I got a hot take. Cowboys are going to win big today. Oh, really? Yeah. I, would like, I would like that. I think it'd be nice to see the Cow Cow Cowboys win again. I'm glad you would think that. <laughs> okay, 623, 37 degrees out. And if you're getting a new pillow, which one is the best? Well, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. Uh-oh, we have Ooh. the answers next. How this SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Major Scott Mueller. I work for Operation Inherit Resolve in sunny Kuwait. I'm here to wish you a happy shout-out and Merry Christmas to my sons and daughter in San Antonio, Texas, Chase, Kiara and Augustus. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Good morning and welcome back. 627 this Sunday morning. Are you picky about your pillows? Uh, a little, well, no, not really, but I, it's the opposite of what my, my husband likes. My husband likes to sleep on a rock mm. and I like Fluffy. something, yeah, I, well, I like something like flatter. Huh, makes yeah. sense. <laughs> it's well, like, are you picky too? I'm very picky. You're very picky? Because we go to sleep at such obscure times. Really? Oh, that's you true. You need to be completely comfortable. That's why yeah. I'm always so cheery. Because <laughs> you have the perfect pillow? I have enough. <laughs> well, some people like their pillows fluffy. Other like foam. Have you ever had foam? Uh, no. No, no me neither. No. I'm afraid it'd tear apart. But so if you're on a quest to find the perfect pillow, 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris has some test results to help you get a good night's sleep. 
What makes the perfect pillow? Could my pillow be your pillow? Definitely like a memory foam pillow type of person. It has to be cool. I hate it when my pillow gets really warm. A firm pillow is good. Consumer Reports tested nearly a dozen pillows from popular brands, including Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and MyPillow. In our tests, we assess pillows based on how well they support the head and neck of both back and side sleepers of a range of sizes. And this resilience test measures the firm of the pillows to determine how each holds up over time. The pillows range in price from about $4 for this one, from mainstays at Walmart, to $170 for this Tempur-Pedic. It consists mainly of memory foam, polyester fibers, or a combo. If you want good support and a long-lasting pillow, you'll have to spend some money, but maybe not $170. CR found that some of the budget pillows did offer good support out of the box, but when it came to keeping their shape, many fell flat. In our tests, we found that pillows that were lower priced tended not to hold up as well as pillows that cost a little bit more. And even some pricier pillows like the $40 My Pillow Classic and the $65 Casper got only fair scores for resilience. The best of the bunch? Consumer Reports recommends the $60 Co-op Home Goods Premium Adjustable Loft Pillow. Excellent for both side and back sleepers of any size. It comes with an extra foam kit so you can adjust it to your liking. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. I just learned so much about pillows. <laughs> well, if you need one, there you go. That, there's the advice. I don't know. I, I rather just like spend my money on something else. Unless it's a gift, then you have to really watch it. The device. ultimate Christmas gift. Right. Firm pillow. 630, <laughs> 37 degrees out. And if you buy candles from Hallmark, uh-oh, listen up. There's a recall you need to know about. We're going to tell you which candle is causing some problems. And President Donald Trump in Florida following his impeachment, what he said about the proceedings during a speech to a young conservatives group. Good morning and happy Sunday. It is 633, December 22nd. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. It is 37 degrees and I definitely noticed this morning when I woke up that it was a lot colder than it was yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. and, and Sarah warned us. She was like, yeah, winter is coming. It is officially <laughs> winter. About 10 o'clock last night it became winter and Christmas just a few days away. Hanukkah's tonight. I have blue. We have red. Yeah. You have, and of course. Green. Oh, yeah. I have festive ornament earrings. This is a present from Diana Segovia. Thank you. There you go. And All right, Sarah, what are we expecting? I got a scarf. There you go, and it's red. <laughs> it's red. And we are going to be having a chilly morning around San Antonio this morning. Temperatures are in the 20s up in the hill country below freezing at Bernie Stage Airfield, Kerrville at 26, 30 in Hondo. It's even 31 in Pleasanton at the moment. It's 35 at JBSA Randolph and 37 here in San Antonio. So we're technically above freezing in San Antonio, but I do expect that there will be some areas with frost uh, this morning morning so a frosty morning a beautiful afternoon though with temperatures rebounding nicely and a warm Christmas those things will come up in the forecast but for now I want to show you uh, that there are some areas with some very light patchy fog now look down toward Pleasanton visibility is uh, a little bit less it's uh, less than a mile Pleasanton is also experiencing freezing temperatures at the moment so I wouldn't be surprised if there are some patchy areas of freezing fog what does that mean? That means that that fog, when it lands on a surface like the grass, it'll turn into ice and look a little bit more like frost. Uh, so that's possible in some areas, just a frosty morning, not expecting any uh, concerns on the roadways at all. And then as soon as the sun rises, we're really going to warm up nicely. Temperatures will jump into the 50s pretty much uh, like that pretty quickly. Uh, light and variable wind staying in the 50s through lunch, 65 in the afternoon, and sunny and then we'll become cold this evening. We've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. There's a certain holiday coming up and people want to know what the weather's going to be like for Santa Claus. So I'll be back with a look at that in just a few. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Overnight, San Antonio police make a second arrest in the death of off-duty SAISD officer Detective Cliff Martinez. 29-year-old Alfredo Martinez booked and is now facing a capital murder charge. Our Alicia Barrett live downtown with the latest on the investigation. 
Good morning. Well, just 24 hours ago, we were standing outside of that IHOP on the city's uh, south side learning about how Detective Cliff Martinez had been assaulted and then fatally run over after he, after he tried to break up that fight. And now this morning, we know that the two men that SAPD was looking for are arrested. Just last night, Alfredo Martinez, a 29-year-old, 20, was arrested and taken in by SAPD Street Crimes Unit. Investigators say suspect Alfredo Martinez also played a role in the assault of Detective Martinez and was inside the gray sedan that fatally ran over the officer Saturday morning. That was in the parking lot of the restaurant located off of I-37 and Hot Wells Boulevard. And now the suspected driver of the car is 23-year-old Jorge Lopez. He was arrested earlier Saturday after witnesses told police they saw him run off from the Southside restaurant. Jorge Lopez is also charged with capital murder. And later today, we do expect to hear more from SAPD regarding the latest arrest. That's of Alfredo Martinez. Police are also questioning a 21 year old man who they say is considered to be a person of interest. And again, we hope to find out more details of both of those men later on today. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. In your morning headlines, North Korea says leader Kim Jong-un has convened a key ruling party meeting to decide on steps to bolster the country's military capability. Now, the meeting comes amid speculation that the North could abandon diplomacy with the U.S. and launch either a long-range missile or a satellite-carrying rocket. That's if Washington does not accept its demands for new incentives to salvage faltering nuclear negotiations by the end of the year. And President Donald Trump not taking the weekend off. He is in South Florida addressing students at a conservative conference. The president was seen and heard encouraging young conservatives to stand up to what he calls the quote unquote radical left. All of this happening just days after he was impeached by the House. Now, President Trump telling these students in West Palm Beach, Florida, that they are quote on the front lines of defending our way of life. End quote. The president also talking about House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's delayed transmissions of the articles of impeachment to head to the Senate. Now that move might delay a trial in the GOP controlled chamber. In your consumer news, Hallmark is recalling a line of its scented candles over fire and laceration concerns. Now the recall involves more than 4,000 of these balsam soy blend dark candles. Now according to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, when the candles are lit, the glass jar can break, causing possible fire and lacerations. Now, no injuries have been reported so far, but Hallmark has received six reports of the glass jar breaking, resulting in fire damage to nearby items. And if you wanted one of the new Razer phones, bad news. Motorola delaying the reboot of its Razer flip phone. The new Razer foldable smartphone was supposed to be available for pre-order the day after Christmas and in stores by January 9th. But according to several reports, the launch dates have been pushed back. Motorola has not provided an updated timeline for the $1,500 phone. But reportedly, Motorola is saying it is not expecting a significant shift. Motorola says that the delay was due to a higher than expected demand and limited supply. The original Razer came out in 2004. It went on to become the best selling phone of all time in the United States. That is until we have the iPhone. Yes, I remember my Razer. I loved my Razer. Never had but. a razor. I was always too nervous it was going to break in half. And I oh, think yeah, mine did. I <laughs> Not right away. You know, it came to a point where I did have, like, duct tape together, and I would have to, like, hold it together when I was talking to someone. It was really, I know I, did, I looked really ridiculous, but I loved my phone. <laughs> We're learning Too so much, much information. Yeah, Too we're much learning a lot. 639, 37 degrees out. <laughs> On the first official full day of winter, we're talking about getting your home ready for the cold. Some simple steps you can take to avoid any wintertime disasters. And next, thousands served a warm Christmas meal thanks to the HEB Feast of Sharing event. And taking a look outside with live hands, Sarah was right. It was cold out there. 37 <laughs> degrees. I definitely Good job, felt Sarah felt the difference when I woke up this morning. Uh, yeah, so it's cold now, but we're going to expect some sunshine later on today. We're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. And welcome back. It is 643. HB showed holiday spirit during its annual Feast of Sharing Dinner, where collectively they have served thousands of people and so they can have a nice Christmas meal. Now yesterday, HB served 3,500 pounds of ham, 202 gallons of gravy, and 14,000 dinner rolls. Tra tradition here started back in 1989 and has been going strong ever since. 
us at ATV, it's just really important to be able to give back to our communities and customers that um, spend time shopping with us all year long. So ATV tells us by the end of the dinner, they served over 250,000 people across the state of Texas. Look, and people were very festive mm -hmm. with their outfits. And you saw the little boy with face paint with a reindeer. Look, look at the dancing oh, Christmas tree. The dancing tree. Christmas tree. I love it. Hi, guys. <laughs> I was I like they're waving at me. <laughs> I love that stuff. It's that, the Jimenez yeah. dinner, and it's so important to our community. Yes. Definitely important. It is feeling a little chilly this morning. I'd say a it's, lot it's cold. Chilly. It's 37 it's cold degrees. This morning. I have my yeah. heavy coat today. And you guys see all those pink uh, temperatures there? Mm -hmm. Not just for looks. Not just for looks. <laughs> it indicates, although we do love a good pink, right, Stephanie? I do. Oh, <laughs> it's not just for looks. It's also uh, signifies when temperatures are at or below freezing. And so you can see very clearly where that freezing line is from Bulverde out to Bernie Stage, down to Rio Medina, and through Hondo. So anything that's just north of that, uh, you could see some frost this morning. Uh, and so keep that in mind. That does include the northwestern tier of Bear County. So we're talking uh, Fair Oaks. Uh, we're talking Scenic Oaks area uh, out toward Leon Springs as well. So just keep that in mind. There could be some frost. It looks pretty and it's fitting this time of year. Uh, as we zoom out even more, you can see that that freezing line extends all the way to Carrizo Springs as well. Uh, and temperatures this morning, very cold up in Kerrville. It's 24. So a hard freeze happening right now in Kerrville. Uh, but here in San Antonio, up through New Braunfels and even up toward Austin, we're above freezing at the moment. There are some areas of fog, however, uh, so don't be surprised if you're driving around early this morning, especially if you drive around before the sun rises in the next couple of minutes. You may notice uh, some areas of patchy fog. Some of that could be freezing fog, which again will just add for a nice a Christmassy kind of look uh, to the grass in the front lawn or even on your vehicle. There is some dew on vehicles this morning and so that could result uh, in a freezing of that dew and that could be just a light glazing of ice on your vehicle. So keep that in mind and let me know if that happens or not. You can find me Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Go to ksat.com. Let's take a look at today's weather setup across the nation. There is one big system across the south uh, eastern tier of the United States that's bringing a lot of rainfall uh, to them. This could be an issue for those who are traveling uh, over the next day or so. Uh, it could cause some delays, especially because Atlanta, there's a big airport right there. So we'll keep that in mind. This low pressure system, though, is bringing in drier air to Texas. So while the eastern half is dealing with rain, Western half is dealing with the drier air. We're on the west side of that. So if you're traveling by road today across uh, Texas, just know that the weather just pro pretty much everywhere you go across the state of Texas is going to be pretty nice. Dallas a little bit cooler than us here today with highs in the 50s. Houston about the same weather. Laredo a little bit warmer near 70 degrees. And speaking of the same weather, here's a look at our weather. We'll still be in the 50s right around lunch. 65 for the high today. Sunny with a light and variable wind. And tonight will cool down very quickly. If you want to go view some Christmas lights tonight with the family, know that you'll need to take that coat with you because temperatures are going to fall off pretty quickly from the 60s and we'll get into the 40s by 10 o'clock this evening. Get out and enjoy those Christmas lights. It's going to be after Christmas next weekend. Hard to believe that. I can't believe that. We'll have a mild Christmas week uh, with temperatures climbing to 73 degrees on Christmas Day, 72 on Christmas Eve. And as far as rain chances go over the next seven days, it does look like next weekend we could see some light rain, especially by Saturday and Sunday of next weekend. So, yeah, tonight would be a great night to go look at Christmas lights because it's going to feel cold. You can grab some hot cocoa with the family yes. uh, and enjoy those Christmas lights. Yes, and hopefully there are enough people like along the river walk where it, you know it's not too cold because there's so many people right. so this is a time we want right. crowds just to stay warm you were saying you were going to go to lock and tear which oh, is yeah. great this time be of year pretty in the evening cool. have fun yeah. oh yeah so much thanks Sarah. <laughs> 648 37 degrees out speaking of cold is your home ready for this colder weather what you need to do to make sure your house is ready for the winter well, I think this little one, he's snug as a bug in a rug, maybe right. falling asleep. Yes, you're going to meet this little guy. Perfect sweater coming up on Good Morning San Antonio.
Well, it is puppy time and a new face. Nicole Deersign is Hello. here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Who'd you bring with you? So this is Pepper. She is a six month old Chihuahua mix. She just arrived yesterday at the shelter and she's feeling a little nervous, but she's very sweet. She is definitely a puppy who would, I think, blossom once when she goes home to her forever family. And Chihuahua six months old, she's probably not going to get a heck of a lot bigger. No, I don't so think so. She'll be nice and small. Okay. And obviously loves being held. Yes. And just kind of has those little chihuahua shows yes. too. So what you got going on as we head into so, Christmas? We are very excited. We have an adoption event happening this Saturday the 21st at Busted Sandal Brewery. It's located right off of Fredericksburg Road. It'll be happening from 2 to 6 p.m. We'll have adoptable puppies there and additionally a dollar from every pint sold will be going back to the San Antonio Humane Society to help our pets there. Oh, so there's an excuse to Yes. Have another one that we have again. <laughs> but anyway, so head on out there. Uh, great events. If you're out doing a little bit of uh, Christmas shopping on Saturday, you can stop by and have a little Christmas cheer and maybe come home with a new little friend for Christmas. And if you'd like more information on this little baby, just head on over to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society over at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. 226 7461 is the number to call. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Pepper, so cute. I know. I love dogs and sweaters and <laughs> holiday sweaters. I think it's so cute. So cute. Yeah. Our, our dog, though, mm -hmm. no, Gordo. no sweater. Your dog's name's Gordo. Gordo. Yeah. Gordo would, will not wear one. But he's always kind of ready for the cold. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, it's hard to put a sweater on Gordo. He's, he's kind of round. Is this Bobby <laughs> joining us? I have a question about Gordo. Uh oh. Is he a little too Gordo for he, a sweater? Yes. He is way too <laughs> Gordo for a sweater. That's which, what I thought. Which is funny because he has a little head. So you, you, it looks like he could wear one, and you, you try to like put it on, but then it's like there's this big body. <laughs> he needs a an A-line sweater. He needs an A-line sweater. Yeah. All right, our producers are telling us to move on. Sorry, guys. Pepper is ready for the winter, and it's time that you should be too. That's true. Sarah told us to get ready, so here it is in this morning's Angie's List report. GMSA producer Jared Hoeing has a winter readiness checklist. Sweater. We've already had some cold days here in the Alamo City, and if you haven't already, it's important to make sure your house is in good shape. Check your gutters one last time before winter. Most basement water problems are the result of clogged gutters, so you want to make sure any last-minute leaves didn't fall, lurking to cause a problem. A quick check inside your home can help you avoid another water disaster, like frozen pipes. Check insulation. Check the insulation in your attic and make sure you have an adequate amount and add more if necessary. Also check around pipes. Adding insulation can help you avoid a burst pipe and many headaches down the road. Plan ahead to stay warm, whether you have a furnace or a fireplace. Make sure your filters are changed. That may be something that you do or that your service provider does on a scheduled basis. Uh, when it comes to fireplaces, Nobody knows fireplaces better than a pro, a chimney sweep or somebody who specializes in, in those things. So make sure they're good so that you know that the coming winter you don't have to worry about anything. And don't forget to pay a little attention to your yard too. Trim your trees. Make sure branches are away from your house. You don't want to run the risk of a raccoon family taking up residence in your attic to stay warm. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Jared Hoeing. All right, time now, 6.55, 37 degrees out. Take a look at some birthdays this weekend. Happy birthday, Christine, 51 years old. Enjoy your day. Happy birthday, and next up is Mitchell, 28. Happy birthday, Mitchell. Remember to keep sending those birthday pictures to ksat.com, including name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA Christmas Countdown, everything you need to know about the scramble to the stores and the situation on the roads and in the air, plus the new details about the death of a mother in Texas, a close companion now charged with her kidnapping and a mutual friend speaking out about the plot. And finally, a pilot pulled from an icy pond after an emergency landing, how bystanders jumped into action before the first responders could even re reach the scene. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. We'll take a look at these temperatures. Again, anywhere you see those pinks, temperatures are below freezing. And so Stenson just got below freezing. So there will be areas of patchy frost around this morning. It's in the 20s up in the hill country at the moment. But we'll quickly warm up today with tons of sunshine. Nothing but sunshine. 65 degrees, light and variable wind. And looking over the next several days, we'll warm up into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with temperatures climbing into the 70s. So it's going to be warm.
Yes, it will. All right. Thank you, Sarah. We are going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. But when we come back, we have so much to talk about. We have overnight breaking news, an incredible rollover crash involving a BCSO deputy. We're going to have the latest update on that. And also, viewers, you've seen their work, but you haven't seen them. Those are our case set 12 photographers. We're going to hear from their stories later in the next hour. And busy travel day. I'll have an update on airports and delays. See you at 8. Bye. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now, a second suspect has been arrested in connection to the killing of off-duty SISD detective Cliff Martinez. Alicia, Alicia Barrera joining us live downtown with what we know so far. And an early morning crash on Bernie Stage Road left three people in critical condition. The charges police are now saying that driver may be facing. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 37 degrees to start your Sunday morning, but the sun is out, it is shining, and our Sarah Spivey joins us with what you can expect this holiday week. Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, December 22nd. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thanks for joining us. Uh, hope you're having a beautiful morning. It's nice, but it is cold, 37 degrees. You will need a heavy coat for this morning. Definitely in the morning hours at least uh, because we are going to warm up nicely into the afternoon. But this morning temperatures are right near freezing and they're close to the dew point or in this case the frost point. Take a look at this picture. Justin Horn sent this in to us this morning. This is frost on his front lawn there and you can see that it's completely uh, the skies are completely clear. So this is just the perfect recipe for frost to develop this morning. Clear skies allows the temperature to cool down pretty quickly and the dew point is right near freezing and so that's what created the little frost. Dew developed on the grass and then it froze because temperatures are near freezing just about everywhere you look around the Alamo City. Uh, you can see it's 33 at Port SA, 33 at Stenson. Anywhere you see this pink color, that's where temperatures are below freezing. So you can see the freezing line goes from Bulverde to Bernie Stage to Rio Medina and down to Hondo and places to the north and to the west. In fact, it's quite cold up in Kerrville and Comfort this morning. Temperatures in the mid 20s up there uh, and we've already warmed up by two degrees this morning. We started off at 35. We're at 37 and that was just within the last 10 minutes or so. So we're really going to warm up nicely today. Temperatures will be in the 50s for the first part of the day. Chilly and cool with tons of sunshine. And then in the afternoon, 65, around 65 for the high. We'll be becoming cold tonight as well. Uh, so a great night to go out and enjoy some Christmas lights before the Christmas week kicks off. Light and variable winds today. I'll be back with a look at your Christmas forecast in just a few. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. In your top stories this morning, San Antonio police have made two arrests in less than 24 hours, both murder of the off-duty SISD officer, Detective Cliff Martinez. 29-year-old Alfredo Martinez has been booked and charged with capital murder. Now, our Alicia Beretta joins us live. Alicia, was the suspect involved in the fight that the detective tried to break up? Yes, um, SAPD has confirmed that Alfredo Martinez was one of the people inside that Southside IHOP. And that's when we know Detective Cliff Martinez, who was working as an overnight security guard at IHOP, pushed them all out and they all ended up in the parking lot, Alfredo Martinez included. And then we know that unfortunately things ended tragically yesterday morning. Investigators say suspect Alfredo Martinez also played a role in the assault of Detective Martinez and was inside that gray sedan that fatally ran over the officer Saturday morning in the parking lot of the restaurant that's located just off of I-37 South and Hotwells Boulevard. Alfredo, Alfredo Martinez was arrested late last night by SAPD Street Crimes Unit and is charged with capital murder. He's the second arrest in this case. Hours before he was taken into custody, police were able to track down and arrest the driver of that gray sedan. The suspected driver of the car is 23-year-old Jorge Lopez. Witnesses told police they actually saw Lopez run off that morning. Jorge Lopez is also charged with capital murder. And later today, we do expect to hear from SAPD regarding this latest arrest of Alfredo Martinez. And we do know that detectives are questioning or speaking with a 21 year old man who they believe is a person of interest. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Alicia. Three people now in critical condition after a suspected drunk driver hit a deputy's vehicle. All this happening in North Bear County near Bernie Stage Road just off I-10. Police telling us that a deputy pulled over to help a stalled vehicle. That's when a driver hit the deputy's car, pushing it onto the stalled vehicle, pinning the people inside the vehicle. Now, a man was airlifted to University Hospital in critical condition. A woman and child also taken by ambulance in serious condition. Police say if the driver tests positive for alcohol, she will face intoxication assault charges. Right now, though, police still investigating. A man is behind bars this morning after police say he robbed the Culebra meat market and also attempted to rob a Dairy Queen that same night. Now, according to an arrest affidavit, back in October, 28-year-old Matthew Martinez ordered food and then passed over a note to an employee there which read to put the money in the bag or else they would be shot. That's when the employee got the attention of other people in that store and Martinez took off. Now, shortly after, Martinez walked in the Culebra meat market and demanded money from the cashier while hinting he was armed with a gun. The affidavit said the description of Martinez from both incidents matched. His bond is now set at $100,000. According to a recent report of the 81 city boards and commissions seat in San Antonio, women made up one or less than one third of the membership. Now, part of that issue, child care costs. And that's why City Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez is proposing free child care for all board and commission participants to get more women involved. Our Tiffany Huertas explains how the program could work. For the last year or so, we've been addressing women's issues on the council. Now that we have a majority female city council, we've been addressing some of the issues that prevent women from being more active in their community. And the thing that rose to the surface was child care. In an attempt to get more women to participate, District 5 Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez requested city staff look into child care options for people sitting on boards and commissions. Different approaches to the issue have been discussed, including giving stipends to those paying for child care to attend meetings. Another idea was to offer child care where meetings are held. Well, one of the things that would be more obvious is that we would have board and commission meetings or public meetings in spaces that already lends themselves to children. So that could be a public library, it could be a YMCA. For Gonzalez, this is personal. The mother of three says it can be difficult attending evening meetings. Not just the, the expense of child care, which we all know is at least $15 an hour. Hour, uh, minimum three hours um, and the reality is I just want to see my kids and so if I have to leave them and go to another meeting uh, then sometimes I don't see my children all day. This isn't a new idea. It's been tried in other places. Pittsburgh City spokesman Tim McNulty says the city offers free child care for certain situations. Those include at large public hearings where the city's budget, police and crime and economic development projects are discussed. Free child care is also offered to city employees on days when Pittsburgh public schools are off, but city government is not. McNulty says about 20 parents take advantage of the child care service at public hearings. Here at home, Gonzalez hopes this project is only the beginning. I do hope this is momentum uh, and it forces government agencies, the private sector, to provide child care for women, working women, affordable child care all over the city and all over the country. I'm Tiffany Huertas. To see more stories like this, check out KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. And Shirley Gonzalez tells us there are only about 27% of women serving on boards and commissions, and she wants to help change that. She says staff is currently looking into this issue and we'll get back to them next year. Well, coming up tonight, right here on KSAT, we are taking a look back at some of the most memorable stories of 2019, and we're looking at them through the eyes and through the lens of our video journalists. It's all part of our special KSAT Storytellers 2019, the year in video. We interviewed 15 of our photographers to find out how they shot each story and why they do the job they do. Here's a sneak peek. We meet people, we go into people's homes, we see people on the streets. We become a part of their lives for a short amount of time. The moment that it is routine used to get to, I... is when it all comes down from under you. Oh, we are hearing... It gives me the opportunity to see human emotion <laughs> at its purest, whether it's tragedy, sadness. Bear County Sheriff's Office Deputy K-9 Chuckies and a watch on January 25th. But we're also there for the triumph, the reunions. <laughs> victories.
something new, something different. It's never monotonous. The KSAT Storyteller special airs tonight at 7 p.m. and you can see it right here on KSAT 12. Now to the state of the Spurs. Spoiler alert, it's not great. Silver and Black hosting the Los Angeles Clippers last night and we got to see a familiar foe and the fans let him know. Seemingly every time he touched the ball, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard heard from the crowd, but he brushed off the animosity and he took over the game. The Spurs kept it close enough in the first half. Then, well, Kawhi and the Clippers took over in the second. Kawhi finishing with 26 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds, and 4 steals from the call. His counterpart, DeMar DeRozan, 24 points, 20 of which were in the first half. The final score, 134 to 109. Clippers won big. Next up, Spurs playing the Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies tomorrow at 7 o'clock. We give up 76 points in the paint, and uh, they get about 34, 36 points off turnovers. Uh, you're not going to win that basketball game. That must be some kind of record for points off turnovers. So uh, pretty sloppy and uh, not physical enough you know, tonight. So there you have it. Oh my goodness. Not physical enough, was not, we're not able to keep up with one of the best teams in the league in the Los Angeles Clippers, so we'll see. I mean, Memphis is not that great, so we maybe get back to, the, uh, to our winning ways. You can't say that. I can say that. They're, statistically, they're not great. Oh, there yeah, you go. Okay. Is that it, just, better? it just sounds mean. Is that more we still, uh, Of course we want Spurs to win, but we you do. know. Yeah, we don't well, want to. Memphis aren't very good, so we should, we should win that one. Oh, my goodness. Well, of course, go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 8-11, 37 degrees out. And HEV hosting its annual Feast of Sharing event where they served thousands of people across the city a meal for the holidays. How many people they helped? That's coming up after the break. And it is a great morning if you're a Texans fan. There it is, the winning field goal, sending the Texans into the playoffs. We're going to have a full recap just ahead. Winter is here. Yes, it is, in case you haven't noticed. It's time to make sure your home is ready for these cold days. After the break, how to check your home to avoid any disasters. And let's take a live look out with the lens of live cam. You said it, Steph. Winter is officially here. 37 degrees to start your Sunday morning. But what do the holidays look like? Our Sarah Spivey joins us with your full forecast. This SA Salute Holiday greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. I'm Jeff Nelson with Broadway Bank, an Air Force veteran, and I'd like to wish all the men and women serving on active duty a very happy holidays. Thank you for your service. Also, a special shout out to the last one of my buddies still on active duty, Major General James Jacobson. Jake, all the best. And welcome back. It is 816. The cold weather is here right now. And if you haven't already, it's time to take action. It is 37 degrees. Out. Yes, it's pretty cold right now. The cold right and the now. winter is here. So in this morning's Angie's List report, GMSA producer Jared Hoeing has a winter readiness checklist just for you. We've already had some cold days here in the Alamo City, and if you haven't already, it's important to make sure your house is in good shape. Check your gutters one last time before winter. Most basement water problems are the result of clogged gutters, so you want to make sure any last-minute leaves didn't fall, lurking to cause a problem. A quick check inside your home can help you avoid another water disaster, like frozen pipes. Check insulation. Check the insulation in your attic and make sure you have an adequate amount and add more if necessary. Also check around pipes. Adding insulation can help you avoid a burst pipe and many headaches down the road. Plan ahead to stay warm, whether you have a furnace or a fireplace. Make sure your filters are changed. That may be something that you do or that your service provider does on a scheduled basis. Uh, when it comes to fireplaces, Nobody knows fireplaces better than a pro, a chimney sweep or somebody who specializes in, in those things. So make sure they're good so that you know that the coming winter you don't have to worry about anything. And don't forget to pay a little attention to your yard too. Trim your trees. Make sure branches are away from your house. You don't want to run the risk of a raccoon family taking up residence in your attic to stay warm. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Jared Hoeing. And HEV showing their holiday spirit this weekend at their annual Feast of Sharing Dinner. This is where HEV serves thousands a nice Christmas meal. This year, we are told they served 3,500 pounds of ham, 202 gallons of gravy, and 14,000 dinner rolls. Now, the tradition started back in 1989 and has been going strong ever since. 
for us at ATB, it's just really important to be able to give back to our communities and customers that um, spend time shopping with us all year long. Well, HEB tells us by the end of the dinner, they served over 250,000 people across the state of Texas. Super cute to see all of the, the yes. Christmas cheer. And the festivities mm -hmm. there, the, dancing, the people Christmas dancing. Tree. <laughs> that is pretty amazing. It's so cool. I mean, 250,000 people across yeah, Texas. That's that, so amazing. I know. It's Such a, a good deal. It's a, good, it's a really awesome thing that they do there. Yes. And you know what? It kind of feels like Christmas out there this morning. And even looks a little like Christmas because oh, yeah. some places are dealing with frost this morning. And we have a couple pictures of that frost. Here's a look at the frost outside wow. of uh, uh, our own Justin Horn's front lawn there. So you can see it is frosty this morning. Not enough to build a snowman though. Frosty the snowman will have to wait a little bit. But we are seeing frost in some places, especially the higher elevations around San Antonio, uh, where temperatures have been just a smidge cooler than at the airport. We're at the airport right now, it's 37 degrees, so it is above freezing. Humidity is pretty high, at least percentage wise. It's uh, close to 90%, so those temperatures are close to the dew points, and that's why we were able to see frost form in some places this morning, because uh, once the dew point gets below 32 degrees and the temperatures get at or below 32 degrees, frost becomes possible. And there's definitely still probably some frost in, in many of the areas around San Antonio. It's still below freezing up at Bulverde, Bernie Stage Airfield, below freezing out in Hondo. It's very cold, though, up in the hill country. 26 in Comfort, 27 in Kerrville, and 26 in Bandera. So again, send in your pictures of frost. We'd love to see those. You could do that on our KSAC connect app which is in our weather app itself or of course you can post them on Facebook and Twitter too if you want. Uh, here's a look at some areas of light fog out toward near New Braunfels but really the main area of fog is up near Austin and things are okay for us locally and as we head into the day we're going to have clear skies so temperatures will rebound nicely. We'll be looking at a high temperature near 65 around downtown San Antonio and really around the entirety of Bear County, Comal, Guadalupe, Kendall County, Bandera County as well. With those clear skies we'll also cool down pretty quickly tonight as well. So we'll start tomorrow in the 30s. Again, another freeze possible up in the hill country uh, and as far as uh, the forecast hour by hour goes, it's looking great today, guys. We are going to stay in the 50s uh, during the first part of the day here, so it'll be nice and cool. Right in the afternoon, 65 for the high. Light and variable winds all day, so not much of a breeze. And then make sure to bring that jacket with you if you head out the evening. We've got dry air in place. That's that gold color that you see here on the water vapor and satellite imagery. And so again, with that dry air in place, we're going to have a few days here where we'll be nice and sunny. It's a different story, though, out across the southeastern tier of the United States. Can you see that swirl in the atmosphere? That's the low pressure system. That's why there's a lot of rain out closer to Atlanta. And this is going to cause a problem for some folks, especially if you're planning on flying today or tomorrow. Uh, dry air here in San Antonio. But as we take a look at airport delays, you can already see that because Atlanta is a hub. There are some areas where we're seeing airport delays. The San Francisco airport uh, delayed by 50 minutes, even DFW by 45 right now. Of course, it's also a very big travel day, so that really adds on to the headaches. Elsewhere, though, other airports around, San, around Texas, including the San Antonio airport, not experiencing any delays. Let's take a quick preview of Christmas, and you can see that it's going to be much warmer than it is today. We'll be seeing highs in the low 70s with chilly mornings, really comfortable afternoons. Uh, and as for rain chances in the upcoming week, we are going to have a small chance for isolated rain by the weekend. So again, we'll be updating you on those airport delays uh, throughout the morning. Of course, also give you a look at the roads coming up in just about probably 30 minutes from now. So no white Christmas, but it could be a beautiful <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, it, it really could be. It's going to be gorgeous. A nice Christmas. Yes, I think that's a good way to put it. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 822, 37 degrees out. And the Texans clinched the top spot in the AFC South, and last night they won against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The full recap from Max after the break. <laughs>
Happy Sunday morning. Even happier if you are a Texans fan because after some NFL action yesterday, the Texans have officially clinched the playoffs. Now it was the Texans defense who reigned supreme, causing five turnovers, four of which were Jameis Winston interception and, of course, a fumble. Still, it came down to the wire, though. The offense wasn't exactly rolling for the Texans, but they won the game, and now the division. They won the game 23-20. to Next up, next Sunday, they have an eight-day break, and then they will be taking on the Titans. So very exciting day for the Houston Texans, but we got to talk about the other Texas team that has yet to make the playoffs. That is going to be determined today, at least part of it. Cowboys are going to be taking on the Eagles today at 325 in Philadelphia. Kind of a winner go home match. If they win, they clinch the playoffs. So we could have the Cowboys and the Texans in the playoffs. Yeah, a lot of people are rooting for the Cowboys today. A lot of people. 827, <laughs> 37 degrees out. All right, Royal Caribbean is teaming up with the Eagles football team and 4,000 fans to set sail on the ultimate cruise when it's all happening next on GMSA. And it was like something from a movie, something like Ghostbusters. A green slime was actually seen gushing onto a highway in Detroit. What experts are saying about this green goo still ahead on GMSA. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, and if you're stepping outside, you will feel that 37 degrees right now. Don't forget that jacket. But Sarah, <laughs> no. you're telling us that it is going to warm up. Yeah, it is. Not only will you feel how cold it is, you might even see how cold it is because there are some areas of frost. Let's take a look at morning temperatures. Uh, it is below freezing up at Bernie Stage Airfield, below freezing out in Hondo, below freezing up in Kerrville as well. But it's 37 right now at San Antonio International. Airport 33 in Cincinnati and 34 in Pleasanton. Ahead in the forecast, we'll talk about this frosty morning, which will lead into a beautiful afternoon. And of course, we'll also talk about your Christmas forecast. Looks like it's going to be a warm one. But first, again, I do want to take a check on the airways because there are some delays as we uh, continue to update this for you. Uh, Dallas Fort Worth International Airport is delayed by 45 minutes on average. San Francisco delayed by 50 minutes on average. And again, zooming in to the state of Texas, you can see that really the only regional airport that's experiencing a delay at the moment is DFW. But as you well know, if you do travel by air, a lot of our flights do connect up in Dallas Fort Worth. So just continue to check in with your airlines. I'll have a look at road conditions coming up in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. A top story we've been following closely this morning. Three people in critical condition after a suspected impaired driver hit a deputy's vehicle. It happened in North Bear County near Autumn Stage Road off of I-10. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with more details. Good morning. Well, that happened just north of Bernie Stage Road, and that portion of I-10 was closed off for several hours due to the extent of damages and as well as that investigation. And we know that the driver will be tested, has been tested uh, for suspicion of alcohol. Those results are pending. Investigators say a deputy was helping a stalled vehicle on the eastbound lanes of I-10 around 3.30 this morning. We're told the deputy took the precautions necessary and blocked the number two lane on the eastbound side to shield that stall vehicle. However, unfortunately, that wasn't enough. The suspected drunk driver slammed into the deputy's unit. The impact flipped over the deputy's vehicle, pinning several victims underneath. There was presence of alcohol at the time of the initial contact. And at, at this point in time, uh, investigators are working to obtain a blood warrant uh, where she could possibly face intoxication assault charges. We know three people were inside that car, a man, woman, and a teenager. The man had to be airlifted, and he's in critical condition. The other two victims we know were taken by ambulance in serious condition. All three victims, as well as that driver, are at University Hospital uh, recovering, and the only person that walked away without any injuries was that deputy. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. In your morning headlines, history made this week in politics as President Donald Trump was the third president ever to be impeached. ABC News political director Rick Klein reports on the highlights. I'm ABC's Rick Klein with the latest in politics this week. History made. President Trump became just the third president in American history to be impeached. Now he is the first ever to face a Senate trial while running for re-election. By the way, it doesn't really feel like we're being impeached, do you? 
Whether or not it feels that way, impeachment is very real. Trump used a rally in Michigan to turn the tables on Democrats, warning of a political backlash against his rivals. House Democrats have branded themselves with an eternal mark of shame, and it really is, it's a disgrace. Democrat lawmakers do not believe you have the right to select your own president. As for the Democrats, a debate here in Los Angeles showcased a new leading candidate and became a pile-on targeting Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Billionaires in wine caves should not pick the next president of the United States. Mr. Mayor, if you... If you had won in Indiana, that would be one thing. You tried and you lost by 20 points. Buttigieg forced on the defensive about his record and background. If you want to talk about the capacity to win, try putting together a coalition to bring you back to office with 80% of the vote as a gay dude in Mike Pence's Indiana. Impeachment, though, continues to overshadow the race. We have to stop being obsessed over impeachment, which unfortunately strikes many Americans like a ball game where you know what the score is going to be. Christmas will provide only the briefest respite from the campaign trail. With that Senate trial looming in January, candidates will spend as much time as they can in Iowa and New Hampshire before Washington calls them back. Rick Klein, ABC News, Los Angeles. And police in Chicago are looking into a shooting that broke out inside a home and injured 13 people. It happened early this morning, police believe during a house party. Now all of the victims were taken to a hospital. Police say the ages and conditions of the victims are still not known. And North Korea says leader, leader Kim Jong-un has held a key ruling party meeting to decide on steps to strengthen the country's military capability. Now the meeting comes in the middle of speculation that the North could abandon diplomacy with the United States and launch either a long-range missile or a satellite-carrying rocket. That's if Washington does not accept its demand for new incentives to salvage faltering nuclear negotiations by the end of the year. President Donald Trump is not taking the weekend off. He is in South Florida addressing students at a conservative conference. The president was seen and heard encouraging young conservatives to stand up to what he calls the radical left. Just days after he was impeached by the House, now President Donald Trump told students in West Palm Beach, Florida, that they are, quote, on the front lines of defending our way of life. End quote. He also talked about House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's delayed transmission of the articles of impeachment to the Senate. That move might delay a trial in the GOP-controlled chamber. And a story that caught our eye this morning, green slime was seen oozing onto a highway in Detroit, and according to police, it is a toxic chemical. Now, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration says that the chemical is usually produced using uh, or during industrial processes like plating, and it is known to cause cancer. Police say it froze into a blob. The plan right now is to use a type of excavator to scoop it up and put it into a safe container, but officials say it could take a couple days to complete that cleanup process. I think you were correct earlier when you said it looked like something out of Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy, but it's also cancer causing. Yeah. So it's, it's a scary not, situation for not, drivers yeah, out there. Not good at all. Oh. All right. 838, 7, 37 degrees out. I almost said 73. Then I remembered it was winter. Oh, yeah. It might be, you know, later in the week. <laughs> we're going to check in with Sarah about that. But still ahead on GMSA, a four year old boy with cerebral palsy got the ultimate gift from high school students. We're going to tell you about his motorized black Jeep that's still ahead. Oh, hi. Dark Navy Jeep. Well, so much I, think this, I think this one was really a great gift for him, though. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cowboys play the Eagles today, but calling all Eagles fans, Royal Caribbean has a once-in-a-lifetime cruise for you to enjoy with the Eagles football team and thousands of other fans. We're going to tell you when it's expected to set sail after the break. Well, I think this little one, he's snug as a bug in a rug. Maybe right. fall asleep. Yes, you're going to meet this little guy. Perfect sweater coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. How cute. We love dogs and sweaters. <laughs> Show us your pictures. Here's a beautiful picture. San Antonio, beautiful sunshine out. But don't be fooled. It's still 37 degrees. Sarah says you might be able to lose some layers later in the afternoon. We're going to check in with her in just a bit. 
Well, it is puppy time and a new face. Nicole Deersign is Hello. here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Who'd you bring with you? So this is Pepper. She is a six month old Chihuahua mix. She just arrived yesterday at the shelter and she's feeling a little nervous, but she's very sweet. She is definitely a puppy who would, I think, blossom once when she goes home to her forever family. And Chihuahua six months old, she's probably not going to get a heck of a lot bigger. No, than I don't so think so. She'll be nice and small. Okay. And obviously loves being held. Yes. And just Kind of has those little chihuahua shows yes. too. So, what you got going on as we head into so, Christmas? So, we are very excited. We have an adoption event happening this Saturday, the 21st, at Busted Sandal Brewery. It's located right off of Fredericksburg Road. It'll be happening from 2 to 6 p.m. We'll have adoptable puppies there, and additionally, a dollar from every pint sold will be going back to the San Antonio Humane Society to help our pets there. Oh, so there's an excuse to. Yes. Have another path that we have, <laughs> but anyway, so head on out there. Uh, great events. If you're out doing a little bit of a uh, Christmas shopping on Saturday, you can stop by and have a little Christmas cheer and maybe come home with a new little friend for Christmas. And if you'd like more information on this little baby, just head on over to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society over at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. 226-7461 is the number to call. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Well, Philadelphia Eagles fans can now set sail with their favorite team starting next spring from March 21st to the 28th. The NFL team, along with Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, inviting 4,000 fans on the inaugural Philadelphia Eagles fan cruise. The anthem of the Seas Vessel will depart from Cape Liberty, New Jersey and stop at several Caribbean islands. Now, fans will enjoy current players and team legends on board. And if you're interested, you can find out more at PhiladelphiaEaglesCruise.com. Max? Are you going to find out more? I was actually, I, I looked into this. PhiladelphiaEaglesCruise.com. They, <laughs> they brought this up this morning and I was like, why are we pretending like I already haven't even looked into it? There's 20 <laughs> legends on board. I have four of the people's jerseys. Aww. Very excited. We'll <laughs> that see. That is awesome. A dream man, you're, come true. You're a bold man being so, a Philadelphia one man of, here. One of the San people Antonio. going aboard, Vince Papali. Have you ever seen Invincible? Yeah. Mark Wahlberg. I actually have his autograph. It's been not Mark, Mal Mark Wahlberg, yeah, Vince Papali, yeah, yeah. the okay. Eagles legend. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Some people watching probably like you should have gotten Mark Wahlberg's autograph. Well, uh -huh. hey, that's okay. <laughs> well, both. I'm rooting for you. I Thank hope you. you can get on that cruise. That would be yes. pretty awesome. That's it, but not for the game today. We'll see. <laughs> Are they playing the Eagles? Today? They're playing the Cowboys today and oh, no. not optimistic for the Eagles. It's not looking great. Right now, Cowboys one and a half point favorite, but it should be a lot higher. I'm sure we'll talk about this more in sports. Let's go ahead and go on to weather. Uh, here's a really cool picture. This is actually out New Braunfels. Look, that's frost on the wind on the windshield. Oh my goodness. That's frost on the roofs there. Uh, and we are seeing some areas of frost still, uh, but we are starting to see that burn off as we head into uh, the mid morning hours with temperatures rising as we speak above freezing, but it's still freezing out near Bernie stage, still freezing up in the hill country. Comfort, Kerrville, all below freezing at the moment. But Comfort and Kerrville started off the day with temperatures in the mid-20s. So definitely an intense freeze up there. Uh, you can see that it's already above freezing around New Braunfels. 37 in San Antonio, 35 JBSA Randolph, 38 in Castroville. Again, you can see that it's still freezing in Hondo. Now, there may be pockets of freezing weather still around Bear County, but as we zoom out, most of that cold air is still to the north and to the west. There are some areas of light fog, especially out as you get outside of San Antonio city center. So even in New Braunfels, a little bit of fog right now. Most of the fog, though, is uh, confined to the Austin area, Gonzalez and out toward College Station. Gago Maggie's. Sorry, just had to do it. OK, here's today's weather setup. So we do have an area of low pressure across the Mississippi River Valley right now. That's bringing a lot of rain to the southeastern part of the United States. This is what's going to cause some headaches for people who are traveling by air today, because as you know, uh, Atlanta is a hub uh, for Delta and a lot of the other airlines. So we have to watch out for uh, airport delays. But here in San Antonio and across the state of Texas, we're getting dry air around around that low. And so as far as road conditions go across San Antonio, other than traffic, uh, it's looking pretty good because the weather will cooperate. If you're heading up 35 to Dallas today, it'll be 57. If you're heading down 35 to Laredo, it'll be a little bit warmer, 70 degrees. And if you're going out I-10 east toward Houston, just know that the weather in Houston is going to be very similar to the weather today. Speaking of the weather today, we'll spend the first part of the day here in the 50s, and then we'll clock in around uh, 4 p.m.
them at about 65 degrees with tons of sunshine, light and variable winds, and we will cool down very quickly tonight. In fact, if you want that Christmas feeling, I'd say go uh, look at Christmas lights tonight because it will be cold quickly with temperatures falling into the 40s by 8 p.m. with a light wind and clear skies. That's the perfect recipe for temperatures to be cold as we start the day again tomorrow near freezing again for your Monday morning and then we'll warm up in the afternoons. Take a look at high temperatures on Christmas Eve, Tuesday and Christmas Day. We're going to be in the low 70s, so not necessarily feeling like Christmas, but it is going to feel like San Antonio. Plenty of sunshine and it'll be at least comfortable and not too warm. Uh, now as we head into the weekend, there is going to be a small chance for rain, but of course we'll refine that forecast as we get closer to next weekend. For now, I hope you guys have a happy Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, and the weather is going to be nice and cooperate. And I am, and Katie Blake are tracking Santa Claus on Christmas oh, Eve. Exciting. We're going to follow him around. So if you want to turn on KSAT on Christmas Eve, Tuesday, we'll be showing you where he's at. Yeah, we'll be watching. Sounds good, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 849, 37 degrees out. And high school robotics students in California gave back this Christmas to a four year old with cerebral palsy, how their gift has impacted the boy's life after the break. And take a look at some birthdays. Happy birthday, Francis. Actually, your birthday's tomorrow, but your friends wanted to wish you a happy early birthday. 48 years old. Hope you enjoy your birthday. Keep posting your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. In the news you need to know before you go, a second arrest was made in connection to the death of off-duty officer from SAISD, Officer Detective Cliff Martinez. Now, police arresting 29-year-old Alfredo Martinez late last night. According to police, Martinez now facing charges of capital murder. Police still questioning a 21-year-old who they say is considered a person of interest. And police are looking into a crash that left three people in serious condition that happened this morning in North Bear County. It happened near Bernie Stage Road off of I-10. Now, according to police, a deputy pulled over to help a person in a stalled vehicle, and that's when a suspected drunk driver ran into the deputy's car, pushing it on top of the stalled vehicle. Three people inside were taken to University Hospital, all in serious condition. Police say if the driver shows a positive alcohol test, that driver will be facing intoxication assault charges. Good morning. Coming up on this week after the historic House vote to impeach President Trump, attention now turns to the Senate trial. I'll talk with two senators who will help decide the president's fate, Republican Ron Johnson of Wisconsin and Democrat Doug Jones of Alabama. And I travel to the battleground states of Michigan, Ohio and Pennsylvania to talk with voters about how impeachment will affect their choice in 2020. All that plus the powerhouse roundtable takes on the latest Democratic debate. It's all coming up on this week. And tomorrow on GMSA, our Eric Hernandez talks about how chronic loneliness can be harmful and just a little bit of caring and love can help make a big difference. Temperatures are warming up nicely. We're at 43 now in San Antonio from our morning low of 35. It's still freezing though up in the hill country, so that frost is going to start to burn off. And then we'll be in the 50s during the afternoon. Uh, we'll be warming up into the 60s. Tons of sunshine, light and variable wind today. Warming up through Christmas though, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, our highs will be in the 70s. And then as far as rain chances, only a small chance for isolated rain as we head into the winter weekend. Beautiful week. All right. Thanks so much, Sarah. And before you go, just want to show one more story. We want to tell you about four year old Julian who has cerebral palsy and that affects his ability to move. But high school students in California gifted him a modified Jeep and when he sits behind the wheel, his adventures are limitless. This is pretty amazing. Julian's mom says his ability to interact with other kids has changed drastically in a good way. He no longer has to be carried around or pushed in a wheelchair. So this offers him more mobility. As you can see, we can go to the park and we can play and we can be wild and he can do it himself. So that's huge. And the students from the robotics club say they were in tears and were so happy to be able to help someone in their community. That's awesome. A great gift and great holiday spirit from the students in California. What kid doesn't love, dr love driving their own Jeep around? That is amazing. That's too cool. That's awesome. I had one of those little Barbie uh, uh, cars that went by itself and that was so much fun. Oh, so yeah. Awesome for the, Julian. And a great That's time so for wonderful. him. Have a great <laughs> holidays. Bye, guys. <laughs>